Alrighty, I'm making dinner. Garden a vegan spag bowl because I always have spag bowl before a race and to be able to just whip it out of the packet just like that, straight in the pot or the pan, makes life so much easier. So shout out to Gardner Vegan for having a great spag bowl. Race is tomorrow. Today was, I actually slept in. Karen and I slept in late, got up, made some banana pancakes, great stuff. Then went for a good surf. I surfed for about an hour and a half. Mickey surfed about four while I went and did the tips, tricks and transition tour at the race today. Help out some kids and first timers get their bearings around what's going on. So that was, that was great to be able to give back to a sport that's given me everything in life. But before we can get into the go is tomorrow and explaining the race, we've got to talk about the lead up to the race. All right, so the lead up. We'll take it back four weeks to when I died Hectic. So very quickly, I was in P3, doing my recovery stuff in the pools, doing some meditation breath work, just six seconds in, six seconds out. I was on the third round in the cold pool, about to go to the hot. I'd meditated so deep, I no longer felt the cold, had any thoughts, and it was only breathing, which is a pretty cool spot to be. The timer went off for the four minute alarm to change pools. I've walked out, heavy legs, taken two steps into the pool, and the next thing I remember was being put on a stretcher to be taken out to the ambulance. As the story goes, in that five to 10 minutes of time, I have no recollection of, I've walked in, gone to the bottom, uh, I've sat down on the bottom, and about 20 seconds later, the young boy and his dad were in the pool, and the young boy goes, oh, what's wrong with this man? Why is he sitting at the bottom? What's going on? And the dad was like, oh, he's probably just doing some breath holding training and massaging his back up against the jets at the bottom of the pool. And apparently my eyes were like bug eyes, just open like that, like, like someone, like, if I just panicked and was like, help, but couldn't move. So then he's like, that's a bit strange. He was wiggling side to side to see if my eyes would like track him. They weren't apparently. Uh, then he was like, that's, that's a bit odd. He's come down and just touched my hand and I didn't flinch. And then he squeezed my hand and I didn't move again. And he's gone, oh no, this kid's drowned. Ripped me out of the pool, started straight away on uh, chest compressions, he yelled out emergency, emergency. There was a guy in the shower, having a shower right there. He's come in straight onto the mouth to mouth. Couldn't get my chest to rise. Luckily there was a GP in the sauna about five meters away. He's come running out, started giving me mouth to mouth and was able to get my chest to rise. I went for about two minutes without a pulse. So technically dead, currently a zombie, cool status. Don't recommend having a go at it. They got a pulse going after about two minutes. I uh, was un unable to breathe on my own, still unconscious but alive. Uh, then another round of CPR later, I coughed up some water, took a big breath and started groaning. Um, everyone thought I would, had brain damage from the lack of oxygen to my brain, but luckily I do lots of breath work and have a pretty comfortable four minute breath hold. So my body is used to the lack of oxygen and I train with altitude simulation, preparation, and some repeat sprint work to just get the body used to this kind of oxygen starvation so that when we're training, racing, I can push through that, that pain, that the lungs and everything get. But the weirdest part is that I remember, I don't, I remember seeing white, but not knowing what was going on. There was no physical sense. I could just hear things going on. I was like, what's happening? And I heard the ambulance guys and everyone talking about someone had drowned, they'd been unresponsive, they've coughed up a lot of water, and there's water on the lungs, they were dead for a while. And I was, in my thoughts, were like, oh wow, I hope they're okay. Sitting, I thought I was sitting in the hot pool on the edge and just hear, overhearing what would happen behind me. And I was like, whoa, what's happened? As I went to turn around, I've come back into my body and that's when they put me back on the stretcher and took me out. Apparently in this time that I'd have no memory of, I was able to remember my name, my mum's name, um, the day. I never know what day it is at best of times. And I almost got my phone number right. I was one digit off. Could have been because I had a gas mask on me for oxygen. Could have been their lack of hearing. Could have been the fact that I was dead in hospital for three days. I felt like I'd been run over by a truck or had a hectic race. My whole body was just aching. I guess from my brain taking everything that the muscles had stored in it to get functioning again and get my organs working and be alive. I left hospital um, feeling pretty good but only had really short breaths. Like 
I guess, asthmatics or a smoker. I don't know, I'm not either, so I guess I got to experience that. Not great. About a week at my parents, I started to get, I ran out of Netflix, I finished everything I wanted to watch. And I was like, all right, time to just start reintroducing things. Slowly I went into things with a short 10 minute run. I watched a YouTube video while on the wind train and I ended up being about a 50 minute bike ride on the wind train, just nice and steady and easy. Then I went out, checked some waterfalls with Mickey, just hung out, got in nature, just enjoying being alive and present and spending time with everyone I love. Uh, I went for another run. I, was a, I went and did park run actually. Just an easy 5K, about 23 minutes, so just cruising. Then went for about a 60K bike loop. Really great, some hills involved, everything was feeling good. And I was like, yep, yeah, sweet, let's get back into training. Uh, I came back into training the Monday, did some short little efforts in the pool, um, and then had a gym session, just tapped into that one round of everything. And body felt pretty good, it was holding up well. A Little bit lack of fitness, but other than that, feeling great. Doesn't feel like I just died. Tuesday, I just did a couple 30 second sprint efforts on the bike, just to see what the lungs were doing. And then I had four 30 second hill sprint efforts on the run just to test out just how that was going as well. Went for a little open water swim, just hugging the sand, about 2K. Just nice and cruisy just to get that swimming and open water confidence back and felt really good. The next day I went on a van trip down the coast of Canada and it was sick. We went down to Gamba, then we went to Ngawi, Coffs Harbour, Iluka, Came back to Byron, got to surf with dolphins at Water Goes, had the sickest time ever. The waves were perfect the whole trip. We ate so much food, it was, it was so good. Such a good break that I needed. Come back, now we're at this week. Solid week of training in, pretty much normal training. Swim sessions were a little bit shorter because the swim coaches are still a bit scared of someone who has just drowned, fully exerting themselves. Fair enough, I would be too. But I feel 100%, tested the body out, done everything. Now we're here today. So race focus for tomorrow, you'll be listening to this when it's already happened, is to just hold back enough that I'm good for my lullaby next week. So basically this is a test for my body and mind to see if I'm ready to full send at my lullaby in a week's time. Hopefully I am, I'm sure I will be, but it'll pretty much be a tempo effort. Um, just feel strong in the in the swim. I don't need to push too hard. Hopefully I'll have some feet to follow. I don't know if I will. And then ride some, just a tempo, a strong tempo effort on the bike. Just get my lungs working for 40Ks of intensity. Um, and then on the run, just a tempo effort, maybe like 340, I think. I'll just go off feel, see how everything's going. Um, I'm even going to wear socks, sunnies, and a visor, just so it's a big reminder physically for me to ease back just a little bit and not tip myself over the edge, which I have managed to do every single time I've raced with Bam due to the heat and the heat stroke that I then get after or during the race. So hopefully I don't need to push too hard to grab the win. I want to win, but I also want to be able to send it next week at the Malulaba RTU race. So just easing off this week well, today at Rubina and hopefully we can still win. If not, just make sure I finish being able to stand upright, feel confident in my abilities to go solid training next week and unleash at Malulba. Time to get into this sick dinner and that's lunch for tomorrow and I'll see you after I win, hey? <laughs> So, race done, and I'm alive, and standing, and talking, and feeling really good. So, that's the biggest thing today. Um, I forget where I left off, but I'll just walk you through the whole morning.
unfortunately I've been unable to tape my mouth shut while sleeping just because I've got some lip thing going on right now so I can't put tape over it. Uh, hoping I'm nose breathing, not mouth breathing most of the time. Don't know, I'm sleeping well. Um, woke up, did my bolt score, got 39, so that's a massive improvement. I think it might be my highest on straight away waking up. So I saw that and I was like, yep, sweet, we're in for a beauty of a day. Um, straight in to a cold shower, nice little wake up call, straight in to a chalk brownie cliff bar. Breakfast sorted, rolled out, packed the bags, headed straight down, about a 15 minute drive down to the race, got here before five, racked my bike, did the rego yesterday, so all I had to do was get transition sorted, got all that done, ticked the boxes, chucked down another cliff bar, I think it was the chalk mint one with a little bit of caffeine for a little so lifted me up, got me race ready, went for my warm up, felt really good. Did my attitude preparation and attitude simulation warm up drills. Body was ready to deal with the air hunger and the lack of oxygen and everything that goes on during racing and training and pushing yourself like that. So I was, yeah, I felt, I felt really good. Um, got into the water, just a really short swim warm up. I didn't want to miss anything um, and felt really good anyway. So I didn't feel like I needed to go any further than what I did. Maybe it was like 100 meters. Just a little, little cruisy bit, a little sprint to get ready for the start. Going on to the start line, having chats with the tallest man in triathlon, Sam Betton. The, there was no hooter. We got a 30 second um, announcement and I thought he was saying that I'll let you know when we have 30 seconds to go. But that was the 30 seconds to go. Then he was like, oh, so you've got 15 seconds announcement. And I was like, when? And someone else was like, that was it. And I was like, oh, damn, okay. Start my watch now so it's ready to go. Got the watch going and then he was like, go, go, go. And I was like, is that someone yelling or what's the go? And then everyone started going. I was like, oh, shit, better go. Straight onto Sam's feet. Just sat there like that for about 1.3 kilometers. Just massaging his feet, giving him a little tickle, getting him all warmed up for a good run. You're welcome, Sam. No worries. Anytime. Happily give you a foot massage while we're swimming. Um, and then with about less than 200 meters to go, I decided, because I was feeling actually really comfortable, I was just getting long strokes. Um, it wasn't, pace wasn't pushing too hard, which was really good. Sam's just come back from Husky Try, great race down there, great effort to back up and do so well today. So yeah, I felt really good and decided I might as well test myself. There's no point being a gentleman while racing if he's unable to attack when I attack, that's racing. That's just how it is and that's what I would expect too. Obviously it's annoying and you get pissed off and it then creates a hunger, which is what I love. I love to have the other athletes around me so hungry so that when I beat them, they were hungry for the win, I was hungry for the win and we both just emptied the tank. So I attacked right before the last turn boy on his right, so I had the inside line around the boy and just sent it to the end of the swim. He was tickling my feet a little bit. Appreciate that, buddy. Well done, Travis. Um, ran out of transition. I know that Sam's transitions are a little slower than mine. So today I was um, obviously not going as hard on the bike run. I wanted to test what my swim's capabilities were. I felt really strong, had a nice long stroke, good catch, good pull, and then a nice little attack at the end. Gave me a bit of a feeling of air hunger definitely made me feel like oh damn all right we're pushing it and as we're running to the bike I felt like I needed to throw up but that's what that's what we're here for you want to empty the tank at the end of each leg and have absolutely nothing left that's how you know you've gone hard enough so then we ran to the bike I was trying to not throw up so I couldn't sprint I wanted to really attack it I got a good gap as I was putting socks on before the bike so I made the decision while swimming because I was able to think about that stuff I was visualizing as I was going the original plan was to put socks on after the bike, depending on who was where and what the situations were. If I had been really struggling to sit on Sam's feet, I wouldn't have bothered with the socks. I would have just taken off on the bike and just sat on Sam the whole bike ride. But I figured he's got to take his swimsuit off. I was in my Cannibal Fast suit, a brand new tri-suit that you guys might have just seen. 
and I was like, yeah, I've got time to put socks on. We'll be right. We'll come out at the same time. Unfortunately, I was about five seconds too slow putting my socks on and just managed to come out with too much of a gap. I went hard for the first K to try and get back on Sam's wheel. Just couldn't bridge that gap. I got close. Um, the, the legs were screaming. I was still feeling like I needed to throw up from attacking in the water. Sam was obviously hungry and a bit annoyed that I attacked out of the water, but that was my biggest effort today, was the swim. The rest were tempo efforts, so I'm glad I won the race I intended to win. Um, always, always stoked to have the fastest leg of any part of the triathlon, so stoked to get the fastest swim. Um, and for me, as someone who used to be a weak swimmer, I'm so happy to have the fastest swim in any race. So stoked with that. Thanks for the good toe, Sam. I really appreciate it. Um, it's really gonna help me at Mooloolaba, so shout outs for that. Sam was not waiting for me, fair enough. And I decided, all right, this is, real, this is actually an ideal scenario. So I just settled in for my own tempo. I uh, just analyzed my heart rate then. And I was sitting between 120 to 130 on the bike, averaging about 39.5K an hour for the first three laps. And then I've forgotten his name. I'm terrible with names. This isn't a post-drowning thing. This is just always been not good at names. Um, but the guy who got third today, he caught me on the third lap or the end of the third lap. So we got the fourth lap and fifth lap together. Basically, I just sat on him. <laughs> so massive shout outs, mate. I appreciate that as well. Um, and then felt really good. And you can see the point where I've sat on if you're on Strava and follow me and like 120 to 130 just sitting like this and then poof, 160 for the rest of the way. So happy to feel really good and comfortable. I actually felt quite comfortable sitting on the wheel and just having that mental thing to just pace off someone. Would have been great to go no socks, pace off Sam, come off, put socks on and then run, but it's how it is. Um, I feel confident, comfortable and confident for next week after that bike. We came back towards the bike and same scenario there's no point being a gentleman in these races i'll shake hands be your best mate before and after but we're here to win and every advantage is the advantage i need so coming in the transition i'm always first no matter what no matter what pack i'm in and whatever what's happening i'll put the best effort i can to get in front into transition to give me the most amount of time thankfully i did because old mate who i've forgotten his name i think it starts with m actually stacked it he's uh had the drink bottle on the rear of the bike as he's brought his leg over, he's just gone over and had a good old oopsie daisies. Um, so I, hopefully he pulls up all right, he's racing next week as well, um, which actually gave me a really great gap for the run, which means I was able to settle in really good. So I came in, racked the bike, feeling quite confident and comfortable. I liked running in my socks rather than barefoot, so that was great. I also had my cliff visor, my Oakleys, um, and my running strap, obviously socks were already on. Just as physical reminders for me to just not send it, not empty the tank, don't try and catch Sam. He was so far up the road anyway, he's a great athlete that I wasn't gonna be able to run him down today. Um, so it was, it was just perfect scenario for me, the ideal race, that exactly what I set out to have. How you feeling, Trav? Yeah, really good. good on you, mate. Felt really comfortable, just nice tempo. I haven't analyzed my run yet. I'd say I'm maybe like average of 160 heart rate. My watch told me I had a 178 finish heart rate. Um, and yeah, I, I felt really great. My feet went a little numb in the shoes. I think they were a little tight with socks on. So I might just loosen them just a smidge. So hopefully they're not too tight for next week at Malulaba because I will be sending it and emptying the tank and hopefully still walking after the race. I will definitely need the medical tent to lay down and relax after the race, but let's hope I'm no dead person again. One death is enough in a lifetime. I'm not a cat. So yeah, super stoked. Came across the line in second, 155 time. So I'm really happy for about a 60 to 70% effort race being a 155. So I'm, yeah, I'm feeling positive, confident, really capable for a solid race next week at Rabin, um, Malulba. And yeah, massive thank you for every single person who has sent me messages, so many messages 
since I j drowned and died. Um, so many messages of support before that when I was really struggling financially. Um, for anyone else who is struggling with anything at the moment, I highly recommend looking up the teachings of Abraham by Esther and Jerry Hicks. I read, listen to the audiobooks because I don't have time to sit down and read a book, I fall asleep. If you are someone who can read a book, go for it. Reading is so much better than listening to an audio, audible. I started with the law of attraction slash money because I was struggling financially. I'm no longer in that situation. I'm filling my life with abundance and just manifesting all this great stuff and I'm able to get by and afford what I need to afford and now it's time to increase my budget and hopefully increase the money coming in. Basically, a summary of that is you wouldn't hold your breath, you're scared you're not gonna breathe again. There's no need to hold your money thinking money's not gonna come in. You give money, you get money. It's all just a representation of energy, transformation. You By you paying someone to do something, they have the money to do something you, they want. You then get rewarded for that, blah, 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 blah. Listen to the books. So a massive shout out to every single person who's messaged me over the last month or so. I just love the support. I guess I've manifested that too. We've manifested everything that happens in life. But yeah, I'm just so thankful for, for everyone. So thankful for life, the opportunity to be able to race still. I know that around the world, other people are in bad situations. Thankfully, I'm not super lucky, super grateful to be living on the beautiful Gold Coast. Super thankful for the event for, crew for having this event, for cri Triathlon Queensland, Triathlon Australia, all my sponsors. There's just so much to be grateful for in this racing, training, life, experience, everything. Thank you a million, everybody, and I'll see you next week.